At some point, you build a telescope that's too big to fit in a rocket. The James Webb would not fit in a rocket. So we had to make the primary mirror into individual segments. It's been done on the ground once or twice, but doing it in space is a whole other set of challenges. Is it going to hold? Is it going to keep its strength? Is it going to keep its alignment? Will it deploy? This is a worldwide telescope. It's the collective investment of the U.S. and the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency that all these countries are willing to make to reach the edge of the universe. Tremendous. Uh, if, if you think back to our science lab surface, uh, we were all holding our breaths. I didn't hold it for seven minutes, but I hold it for a long time, uh, waiting for that signal back from the surface. In this case, we're going to hold our breaths for a couple of weeks, because that's how long it's going to take to get all those deployments out after the launch. Adding whatever Delta B there are over you know, 300 or 400 different operations that have to occur in space to make this telescope actually come to life. A huge sunshade has to deploy, which is the size of a tennis court. At this point, things get pretty critical because now everything starts to cool quickly. So now we've got to keep the telescope unfolded before it gets too cold and the joints freeze up. Then we have the instruments started, and each one of these things has to work. So about the James Webb, what's what's new? What's the latest going on? It's very exciting. Lots of things. The spacecraft structure is moving along like gangbusters. We're making the flight membranes. Pathfinder is delivered. So basically, it's almost all the balls are in the air at this point. Sometimes we hear rumors of something that's not going so well. Is there anything like that that you're worried about, you personally, or is it all under control? There are always little problems. Nothing insurmountable. Yeah. The thing that keeps me up at night prevents my hair from, from growing back is is the problem we haven't thought of, the, that, that failure of imagination. Right now we're on schedule and, and making making flight hardware. Well, it's so great to hear that because the entire science community, you know, in exoplanets is ramping up here. Everybody's so excited about the James Webb, but I don't know if you realize how much they're counting on this. I'm aware that my customers are very anxious or the web telescope right. to get on orbit. Yeah, it's pressure, but it's also gratefulness so that all you and your team and people are working so hard to make sure every last thing works. Okay. Okay, great. bye. Bye. Good, huh? It's a great conversation. Um, he's like basically the brains behind the whole thing. And, you know, sometimes I don't ask him this time, but almost every time I ask him, like, well, what if something bad happens to you and you get hit by a bus? Who's the next guy? <laughs> My husband and I think you want Craigslist, look for a really cheap car, and then you drag it home and fix it up, race it. Being a system engineer for the web telescope, I don't really get to touch a lot of this hardware. So working on cars is pretty satisfying because it lets you actually put your hands on something. <sighs> I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Those races are 14 or 15 hours long, and usually we break down before we get to 14 or 15 hours. And James Webb, it's a very different problem, you know? And James Webb has to work first time. It is too far away from the Earth. Where we're putting the Webb telescope is a place called L2. And uh, if you think of here's the Earth, here's, here's the Sun, um, L2 is on the other side million um, miles away from the Earth. The full moon is between us and L2. That's where James Webb will be. It's four times the distance to the moon. Fifty years ago, they say, we went looking for the moon, and we found the Earth. 
Yeah, right? that's true. That picture of the earth, that was really the beginning of the modern environmental movement right there. One of my favorite little lakes. There's an eagle circling around in front of us. In grad school, I asked the question, what does the Earth look like from very far away when you can't see the continents and the ocean? And can you actually tell that there is life on that planet? So we looked at the moon. It's not too many days after new moon when you can just first start to see that thinnest crescent right at sunset. You'll notice that the dark part of the moon is also visible because the earth is shining on that part of the lunar surface. So if you take a telescope and you look at that light, it's earth light all jumbled up together. It's the land, it's the ocean, it's the clouds, the air. And when you spread that light out and look at it, you can plainly see the squiggly line that this is a planet that has the definite clear oxygen line. And there's definitely carbon dioxide and there's methane. Those signals were all tangled up together in the colors of the Earth. And that was what we call the spectrum of a habitable planet. When I first heard of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, I thought that this was by far the most interesting thing to study in all of astronomy. Finding out that there are other civilizations in the observable universe would be pretty much right there at the top of things you could find out. You're working with Jill Tarter at the SETI Institute. Yeah, absolutely. Jill was the SETI pioneer in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. I met her shortly after the movie Contact came out, and I had never heard of Jill before. I didn't know there was a connection between that movie and her. Yeah, the Jodie Foster character is modeled on her. Yeah, Jill is one of my longest mentors. <laughs> When we started, SETI was considered pretty fringy. We didn't even know if there were any planets beyond our solar system. And we spent a lot of time building up credibility, making a distinction between ourselves and the folks who report seeing little green men in spaceships and being abducted. I mean, people would be writing books about the SETI pioneers, and it would be, what's a nice girl?